City residents observe National Day of Prayer. Prisoners escape from Bomana prison. And concerns raised on abduction and abuse of women. This is National MTV News with Helen Sayer. Good evening and thanks for joining us for Thursday's news. The indigenous Motu Koitabuans and other city residents came together in prayer to observe the National Day of Prayer and Repentance. This special act was done in relation to past incidences of violence, abduction and other forms of crimes that have been committed with victims mainly being from the southern region, causing unease among communities. The program was held at the Sir John Guy Stadium Indoor Complex. Given the countless number of issues that have affected Papua New Guinea in one way or another, whether it be social, economic, in the business or government sectors or in the general public, today was a day of repenting and praying to God for his direction and his forgiveness upon the nation. Because of these things, our eyes grow dim. Because of Mount Zion. Oh Lord, you remain forever. You're thrown from generation to generation. Since 2007, when the National Day of Prayer and Repentance was gazetted as a public holiday under then Prime Minister Grand Chief Sir Michael Somare and Deputy Prime Minister Sam Abal, the event has been hosted officially by churches in NCD, whilst other parts of the country joined as well in their various settings of worship. And then in 2019, when the Marape government got into office, the national event became a priority for the government, hosting and funding it each year since then. This year, for the first time, the national government's hosting of the official program has been taken to lay in Morobe province. In hosting the program in NCD this morning, a special act of prayer was done where representative residents of Port Moresby from regions other than Southern or Papua offered prayers of repentance to God for all the unease their people have caused to NCD native residents. Every individual person, families, fathers and mothers, sons and daughters, women, able and not able, well to do and not well to do, who at one way or the other, at a time have become victims of code by code, brothers and sisters from outside of the Southern region or Papuan representatives also forgave their brethren from the other regions. Those that turned up at the event had various reasons to be part of the program, but were centered on praying and repenting to God, seeking God's help for the country. This day is a, a re repentance day for Papua New Guinea. So it means, it means to me, uh, it's like uh, I've done something like did wrong to someone or something bad that I did. So this day is specifically for me to, uh, you know, say sorry and uh, uh, repent on behalf of myself and to God. Uh, this day make a very dif a big difference in my life, as me and uh, my youths, uh, my colleagues here at the back, the girls and the boys, we wake up very early in the morning and uh, we feel like. This day is a very important day, and uh, uh, so as we are students, uh, we want to learn new things. Our, our co-fathers have said all these uh, fundamental uh, laws uh, for our nations as a Christian nation. I'm very happy, and as for my friends, we are all happy for this day to repent for our sins that have, we have done, and we are glad and we have thanked God for this day, and it's a successful day for us. 
Yes, I'm a Papa Nigin already been declared to finish on Papa God. Papa God, yes, I'm a country, yes, a Christian country finished on Namibla Sawa. He put in plan is something on top of the Mipla proud location. Now, Namibla Sawa also is a country being declared to Papa God, a man who created him. Heaven and ground, I mean, kiss him, and people want bed and people come along. Repentance day, Lord's Flood Day. Yeah, I came with my mom and my sister. We all three, we came here. And it was really fun. I had to, we had to pray. But I wasn't that really good in those tasks. But I, I came here to repent and pray up on my sins that I've done past the past few years and the past few weeks and days. Yeah. Denny Sorere. National MTV News. Prime Minister James Marape has urged citizens in the country to forgive and pray for each other. Addressing the media yesterday, PM Marape said the Repentance Day is significant for the country. Marape said every citizen must observe this day. The Prime Minister said the country is going through unprecedented times and kneeling in prayer and forgiving each other is important. I ask for you media to relate to our nation the need for us to uh, note, note the importance of this day. Uh, National Repentance Day is a day in our annual calendar in which the nation comes to arrest, the nation comes to stand still, in which we uh, firstly ask God for forgiveness of our wrongdoings and secondly ask uh, ourselves to uh, forgive one another for the wrongdoings that we've committed in our country. Uh, like all humankind on, on planet Earth, uh, each and every one of us do in our daily lives, offend our, uh, in our family setting, or do offense someone else in our society, or uh, sometimes unfaithful at workplace, or sometimes uh, needing uh, forgiveness amongst each other, as well as uh, forgiveness from God. It's a national day in which the nation comes to a standstill and to seek forgiveness from God and ask and repent of our sins and also at the same time repent and forgive one another in our society. Uh, just like Independence Day, which is a nationally important day for us, uh, the National Repentance Day is very important for the well-being of our country, the rejuvenation of our, our, our country in as far as our response to the national and um, uh, personal morality is concerned. The Correctional Service has released the names of 18 inmates who escaped from Bomana Prison just after lunchtime today. From the 18, one is on death row, two are convicted and 15 are remandis. Their biodata will be released tomorrow. However, CS Commissioner Stephen Pokanis said the escape occurred in the absence of the duty guard. While an internal investigation has commenced on the part of CS, police have joined search for the 18 who are at large. Um, SKA come up, uh, police only stop out, take out one of them, all of us, uh, as we are talking. We play the walking, walk from me, play stop. We play holding meeting one time, all of us, from now. So I'll by walk now long uh, afternoon, by going now long night. And then tomorrow we go, but we join the more police. Uh, we talk about business long, all of us. We give him direction to long alpinis. Call by assisting all police to um, long go out na walk him stake out na search na find him all all wet coat na all triple uh, carabus we all been uh, run away. Yeah. I think only even prevail stop, but only wait him to solve. Whenever me right time, whenever me right time, long only only can go. Only take him to solve opportunity long today long lunch time na uh, total them um, eighteen only go out. Um, first time after probably. Uh, 16 or 17 years, first time long Bomana where you've been got uh, big blast cable also come up. Yeah. All big blast cable long Bomana is uh, come up long uh, late 80s, now I can finish long 90s. Long 2000 I come in the I got big blast escape, uh, more than 10 or even 20. Um, today 18 blast go out and me first time. And in news just in, one of the 18 prisoners who escaped was recaptured by Waters after a five-hour manhunt. The man has been taken back to Bomana Jail. 17 escapees still remain at large. 
Pipeline landowners in Kikori staged a protest in front of MRDC office. Two days ago, pipeline landowners from Kikori held a peaceful protest in front of the MMI building. Their concern was for the Mineral Resource Development Company or MRDC to release their equity payments. They questioned the delay. They have to come clear to us. Where is our money? 2017, 18, 19, 20, where, where is our money? This 20, now we are, we are gathering here, it's 20, 2021 equity payment. And they are going to pay 2017. And where, where, where all this money, our money? According to the landowners, a 40 million kina profit was declared on 15th June. By law, two weeks after the declaration, MRDC must pay equity to the pipeline landowners. That has not happened. The investment. You know, somebody owns that. So we should be compensated for the, the, the term that, you know, two weeks, within two weeks we should be paid. So who's going to get the interest after all when the bank has or the investment has been done? You know, that's the concern. This is not the first time the Kikori pipeline landowners have protested. They say by law, stakeholders acting on behalf of the state must operate within laws. One believes MRDC must be investigated or see changes in the management. In terms of now, maybe the, we ask the government to also reshuffle within the office itself, MRDC office from the management down to the T-boy or whatever you, they call it in the office. We need a new officers there who can, uh, you know, abide within the laws. A similar protest was also held back at the village. Nearly members of 200 ILGs attended and signed a petition. They say MRDC must stop this nonsense and pay up. Now we are waiting. We have not received our equity. So we are now saying that we want our equity to be paid. Therefore, as of tomorrow, we are going to start our sitting protest at copy facility here at Kikori and copy camp where all such camp is. MRDC is yet to respond to these landowners. Jagla Pava Jr. National MTV News. A lot has already been said about development of Pasca A gas project in Gulf Province from the closing of the dialogue on state take and other benefit sharing. However, with finer details of the legal uh, agreement yet to be concluded, the national government is disappointed that developer Twinza Oil Limited continues to release media statements blaming the government for delaying the project. Uh, a few issues, it's, you know, we've got to get it right. Uh, they, for instance, the last issue, they associated Pandora with this. Uh, get this out. Pandora is not part of Twinja. Pandora is a separate field. Pas Pandora and Pascas are two separate fields. So, uh, and, and we've, I've, we've given our best assurance to uh, Twinja investors that, you know, we want them to be, uh, to be uh, the project partner in, in the Pasca project. And so uh, I've allowed for the petroleum minister to have a handle on these projects. And uh, it's just one or two of the wedding issues. They want the wedding to be done this way, and our state negotiating team want the weddings to be done this way. Uh, some of the substantial issues like Pandora, they try to in, you know, bring in in the last instance. We're telling them, and it's straight from the prime minister now you hear it. Pa Twins must get it right. Pandora is not part of Pasca. Let's deal with the Pasca issue. Uh, let's get with the issue. And I've asked my state team to sit down, talk to them, but uh, sometimes they have a funny habit of going to the media first before, uh, before you know, getting it done with the state negotiating team. You're watching National MTV News. We'll be back with more stories after these messages. Stay with us. Welcome back. The New Generation Papua Besena movement yesterday expressed concerns on the recent spate of abductions and abuse of young women in the National Capital District, particularly Papuans. NGO groups Papua Hahine and Papua Native Landowners Association also joined in the media conference. They have also called for witnesses, especially passengers and the PMV bus that one of the victims traveled on to come forward with information. The new generation Papua Besena leaders expressed frustration and concern that Papuan young women were being targeted in recent incidents of rape and abduction. We must make our cities 
safe to live in. We must act to safeguard our women and children. That's paramount. That's important. With the recent incident, it's not safe anymore. The Minister for Transport, Mr. William Sam. Honourable William Sam, you seriously need to sit down with the in-city governor and start talking about the transport system. We have those APEC buses sitting outside at I, the convention centre in Waigani, rotting. Take those and the transport minister should, with the transport board, allow the state to start state-owned run buses. Simply because, suppose you own a bus, now all workman blow you, you work no big yet, all not respecting traffic rules, all not respecting man Mary, then you shouldn't be operating. Because that is when the ICCC, as well as our businesses who have been regulated, those regulatory bodies, should actually penalize those businesses. When you think about that action and it triggers something, you will act. Our jobs in service provision is firstly to keep people safe, secondly is to ensure that prosecutions happen and that the perpetrators get the full justice of the law and that's not happening. You can go to the med soup and you'll get how many cases are not getting prosecuted. In terms of our community here, um, but when you're listening to each of the, uh, the panel members, um, obviously we have a problem. Now, these problems are significant, they're not small issues and most of them will not be um, resolved overnight. We accept that. But we have to start looking for the solutions. We have to start addressing the problems. They call on city authorities to look into managing the public transport system in the city in a way to make it safe for women and girls. The Papuan leaders also called on parliamentary leaders from NCD, Central and other provinces in the southern region to take immediate action. Concerns were also raised regarding the Vagrancy Act and the PNG Road Link Initiative. Danny Sorere, National MTV News. PNG Defence Force has been gifted with vital equipment. The gift from the Australian Army includes a cordon radio system and a DJ Phantom 4 drone. Presented to PNG DF Chief of Logistics, Colonel Albert Palawa, the gift signifies the Australian government's support to the PNG DF in specialist areas. In 2018, the Australian Army also presented a number of two-way radios to boost communication. These new equipment will be used by the logistics and supply units within the PNGDF headquarters in Port Moresby. Central Governor Robert Agorobe has challenged ward councillors to take the lead in organising their villages to ensure they participate in economic activities. He says all villages must be driven by an underlined economic activity. The Governor was speaking to ward councillors at Merigeta recently. Speaking to the ward councillors at Merigeda in the Hiri local level government, the governor highlighted the need for all villages to be organised. He says under the Central Province Smart Provincial Plan, they will be opening up tourism roads in the province and the councillors must take the lead in preparing all villages to participate in economic activities. We are not trying to open up tourism roads. And then with the opening up of tourism roads, you will see that tourists will come out. And right with the provincial plan, we are always rushing to the market to look for money, when money will come to your doorsteps if you are prepared at the community level. So let's fix up our villages. Let's fix up our villages, and the only people who can fix up our villages is you, the ward councillor. According to the governor, over 90% of the country's population lives in villages, and most villages in the country have no underlying economic activities in place for the people to participate. The governor says villages have become a liability to the state, with people expecting service delivery from the government. For Central Province, they are embarking on agriculture and tourism to empower locals. With tourism, they are promoting the homestay concept, with villages encouraged to identify a tourism product. So we are forever spending money. The language that the state uses, service delivery, service delivery, service delivery. We're saying service delivery and everybody's thinking there's free money going to come. Free things are going to come. Lastly, we need to start being part of this, this um, economy. We need to start being part of an economy to drive our villages, drive our province, drive our country. 
One tourism product is the Heritage Program. Under this program, churches that have existed for over 70 years will be rehabilitated to a tourism hub. With that program, we want to give some money to the churches so that you restore our old churches that are over 70 years old. If you've got graveyard there where our old missionaries were buried, we want to give you some money so that you can restore these graveyards. We also want you to build a monument in front of the church, so list on all the missionaries that came through. And we want the history of the church. This then becomes a tourism product. The governor says the aim is to see all villages in the province being driven by an underlying economic activity, and that is through the one crop per farmer concept. So I want our villages to be based on an economy. Every village must be driven by an underlying economic activity. That's why the one crop per district concept. That's why the one crop per farmer concept. That's why the one product per person concept. That's why the homestay concept. It's about revenue coming into the community. Rayon Lakingu National, MTV News. Northern Governor Gary Jufa has expressed his sincere gratitude to Prime Minister James Marape on the announcement of the 5 million kina allocated for the Managalas Forest Carbon Pilot Project in Oro Province. PM Marape said he is confident with Governor Jufa's strong leadership and wants the project to take place. Governor Jufa was pleased to make known to PM Marape and the nation that it is unique as carbon trading credits are usually given for conservation areas. The Marape Basel government has been vocal in its commitment towards conserving vast forests and biodiversity for future generations. Trukai Sports is next. All the details after the break. Tukai Sports. Welcome to Trukai Sports. Following the updated decision on the Vice Chancellor's Cup, the grand final match between UPNG Pythons and Unitex Spartans has been declared a no match with both teams announced as winners. The decision was finalized by the PNG Rugby Football League Committee. Here's Jamie Harrow with more. <laughs> The two-day tournament at the VC Oval at Uni was a success in itself, bringing together major tertiary institutions from around the country. This included UOG, Unitech, UNRE, Divine Red University, UPNG and IBSU. In the grand final match, it was the UPNG Pythons who took on their long-time rival, the Unitex Patents. But due to the lateness of time, the match was called off at half-time break and later abandoned due to bad lighting. In regards to the decision of the grand final, PNG RFL has advised on the decision through Standard Competition Rules Section 14B under heading match, which declares no match. A possible rematch would have occurred, but due to travel and logistics for the visiting students from other tertiary institutions, the match declared the finalists as dual winners. The next VC Cup tournament will be hosted at the University of Goroka in 2023. Jamie Harrow, Trukai Sports. A Rugby League Nines tournament for the district of Karamui Salt Namane is being organized to celebrate independence in the district. The organizers of the AW Super Nines tournament say that the tournament will also be an avenue to expose some of the rugby league talent in the remote district. A Rugby League Nines tournament is being planned for a district in Shimbu province, the Salt Nomane Karamui district. I'm trying to organize this game during the September 16th and I've been the village, especially in my district. So those uh, boys, they are in the village uh, playing these uh, local games, village games, can come and come together during, those, uh, during the independence and they can uh, play and expose their talents. The organizers are keen on having the games as an avenue to promote the sport of rugby league to the district during the Independence Day. We'll do the draw here, we we'll send the draw up and then they're away that they're, they're having a competition, they're playing whichever team they're playing against. They, they know. 
Assisting the tournament patron is an experienced team of rugby league administrators. Simon Maima has been assisting with the Ipatas Cup, Southern Leg in Port Mosby and Central, and has a vast experience to help coordinate the tournament. We are very proud that Mr. Aaron has come on board to assist our local youth in the village. We got a lot of players on board. TNA Cup, that has been selected to Ipatas Cup, to Digital Cup, to name a few. Uh, they've been uh, participating in Wagatumbe and uh, most of the players are in uh, Angamyoks. The coordinators are preparing to get the tournament organized. And I've been with the uh, Ipatas Cup for some time, so been a uh, member of the judiciary. So it will, it will not be an a problem when I assist my, my brother here. There will be a fundraising dance held tomorrow for the tournament at the Granville Motel at Six Mile. Our team here will be doing a fundraising to assist in this uh, tournament in, uh, on, the, on the 16th of September in the district. So if you do nothing in the city, I appeal to all of you can come to Granville and be part of the team. Fidelis Sukina, Trukai Sports. And that ends Trukai Sports. The weather details coming up next. Kai Sports. True Kai Sports. This weather update is proudly brought to you by Money Plus. With you always. A look at the weather forecast for tonight and tomorrow in the southern region. Cloudy with a few rain drizzles in Port Moresby and Kerama. Cloudy with a shower or two in Daru and Alotau. And cloudy with possible thunderstorms in Popandita. In the Mamasa region, cloudy with a shower or two in Le, Wau and Medang. Some rain and thunderstorms possible in Wewak and Vanimo. In the New Guinea Islands region, rain and thunderstorms in Loringa, mostly fine weather in KV and Kokopo and Rabaul, cloudy with a few showers in Kimbe and fine, although cloudy weather in Buka. And in the Highlands region, rain, then morning fog in Mount Hagen, Goroka and Kundiawa, and rain and thunderstorms in Mindy and Wabeg. The weather update was proudly brought to you by MoniPlus. With you always. And that's been the new sport and weather for today, Thursday, the 26th of August, 2021. Until next time, pleasant viewing, be safe and good night.